What's up YouTube? Welcome back. So in this video I want to just come through right quick and talk about Van Jones and his you know moment that he had on national television. Um, you know so when he found out that uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris won the election. You know, he was very emotional and, you know, very choked up and, you know, had some tears. And I just want to talk about that for a moment. So I'll say that, like, you know, once again, you know, we do have a crying black man in the media. And you know the media loves a crying black man. All right. You know, it is an image that puts them at ease, all right? Um, but um, I will say that in this situation, I'm not quite sure if it really warranted crying or, you know, t being teary-eyed, being emotional, whatever. I don't really think so, but I guess that's me and that's just what I think, right? And we're all different and we all have things that, you know, triggers us emotionally. And sometimes something that triggers someone will not trigger someone, something that, you know, vice versa. Right. But, yeah, so, you know, I saw the clip and I was like, oh, OK. Um, so seemingly he was really happy about Joe Biden and Kamala Harris being elected. And... As well, viewing it as like, oh, you know, it's safe again. You know, you know, the big bad boogeyman is out, right? And by the way, I'm just like anticipating, you know, what Trump is going to do next. Because I don't think he's going to go quietly. <laughs> I don't think so. At this point, I'm just like, you know, waiting for... Um, chapter two the trump empire strikes back because <laughs> i'm like wondering like what's coming next <clears throat> um but back to this so again van jones was emotional and he was listing them like a lot of people or groups of people who were like you know quote unquote safe now like immigrants and muslims and he has said mentioned something about george floyd as well and um, folks feeling like they can't breathe and stuff like that. And some people said, like, well, you know, a lot of what he was mentioning didn't really seem to trace back to black folks, except maybe the George Floyd situation, and maybe not even that, since he didn't really mention, like, black folks. He just mentioned people, which I suppose is, like, another thing, too, where it's like, oh, black folks sometimes putting everyone else before themselves or wanting to advocate for everyone else and be concerned about everyone else, even though everyone else ain't really concerned about black folks like that and everyone else a lot of times don't even want to be associated with black folks like that, you know, <clears throat> until stuff hit the fan and then they're looking for someone to have their back. Then they realize, oh, yeah, black people, <laughs> right? But when things are going good, cruising, smooth, they ain't nowhere to be found, you know. So that's something that black people need to be aware of too, you know. People who only check for you when they want something. But that's another story. But um, Van Jones, he was listening like a lot of people or a lot of groups of people, but I don't think many of there was like black people could possibly be included within those groups, you know, but it wasn't necessarily about black folks, like the black community or black folks themselves. It was like, well, you know, a black person can be Muslim, you know, a black person can be an immigrant, you know, a black person can be George Floyd. Well, George Floyd was a black person, but you get what I'm saying. <clears throat> um, but again, um, for me. Personally, um, again, I'm not sure if it was really a big enough deal for the emotion, but again, that's him. Honestly, I could probably understand this emotion more so when 
like Barack Obama was first elected president, like back in 2008. And that did happen with a lot of black people, black men, in, you know, included, who are very emotional about that and who are crying or teary eyed or whatever, you know. And <clears throat> that's uh, very understandable, especially there was like older black people like that, especially because, you know, older black people have seen a lot when it comes to racism in the United States. And for them, they probably were like, you know, this ain't going to happen. <laughs> They're like, this ain't going to happen. Right. So for them, while it is a symbolic victory, it is like a victory that still matters, you know. So in a situation like that, I can understand a bit more. But in this situation, I'm just like, well, you know, are things really going to like, you know, be all hunky dory? You know, be like we're living in Candyland now or something? You know? <clears throat> And also, you know, Van Jones is a citizen of Swirltopia, you know, not, you know, not being shady. It's okay if you're a citizen of Swirltopia, but, you know, you have to be real about your citizenship. You can't be hiding your citizenship, though. And I bring that up because, you know, Van Jones, he's probably more so on some multicultural stuff versus like, you know, black community, pro-black stuff, which is fine, but you do... I need people to be a bit more honest and upfront about that because a lot of times you do get people coming through trying to sprinkle some pro-black seasoning in their multicultural um, pasta, you know, their multicultural um, salad, yeah. their multicultural steak, whatever you want to call it, all right? So I need folks to be a bit more honest about that. So again, considering that, you know, Van Jones is, I guess, he was a longtime member of, you know, a longtime citizen, whatever, of Swirltopia. Considering that, again, the multiculturalism that showed in his concern makes more sense, right? But again, those people aren't really, I don't think they're really concerned about black folks, but what else is new? And, you know, there are some people who just feel like, you know, the image of a black man on national television crying, or being teary eyed or whatever, isn't a good look for, you know, the black man's image. And, you know, I can understand that as well, you know, and folks taking some issues with that. Um, you know, and some people um, feeling like, you know, it's cooning, <laughs> cooning, being a cooning-tastic Negro on national television crying for their white daddy, you know. And I can understand some black people feeling like that, and then some black people saying it's bootlicking. I'm not really familiar with that term, but I've heard of it before, and I'm guessing it's pretty much um, relating to cooning, buffooning, right? <clears throat> but, you know, um, I will say that, you know, black don't crack. Van Jones 52. And coon or not, that black ain't crack. Alright. You don't see any, you ain't see not one crack in that black no, right? But yeah, I had um someone had posted that like, oh I didn't know that Van Jones was fifty two years old. <laughs> like, whoa. I didn't know he was that old actually. I thought maybe like somewhere between like late thirties, forties, like you know. <clears throat> so congratulations to Van Jones on that. <laughs> I guess we can give him that. But what do you think about this situation? Do you think that it's cool? Do you think that it was a bit much? You know, um, do you think it was cooning and buffooning? And what do you think about Van Jones in general?
Do you think that he is cool usually or, you know, a bit of a, I guess, a low-key sellout? What do you think? Let me know in the comments section. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now.